Hi friends, presenting you a follow-up video from my Yes Style haul, updating you on what the products have been doing. But first, if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, stick ahead over to my Instagram. This Yes Style follow-up video is sponsored by Yes Style. They're paying me like they're giving me money to share about the products that I bought from the Yes Style haul. I don't have to submit this video for approval. I don't have to say anything specific. They have some extra money in the budget and wanted to support me. And I was like, thank you so much. I hope you're all okay with that fam. Of course, the ad will be in the title as well as in the description box. So that is the disclaimer at the very tippity top of this video, as well as all the links down below will be affiliated. So if you choose not to use them, I will still have the product name down there so you can search for it separately if you wish to not use my link. If you want to go over the products from my first Yes Style haul video, I will link that one down below. And of course, they provided a budget for that little shopping spree and thought it would be nice to follow up after a couple of weeks since I've been using these products to give you all an update how they've been going. If you had your eye on some of these, giving you my perspective on what I think of them so far. So let me start off with what I think has been my ultimate favorite and a product that I have used before. It's the Cost RX Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essence. I actually finished one of these maybe a few years ago. I left it alone because I'm like, you know what? I've been introducing so many more new products into my regimen. Maybe I'll try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But the Snail Essence was a product that was always a staple of mine. I feel that no matter what I use it with, no matter what time of year it is, it provides just that beautiful hydration, that moisture okay leaves my skin super bouncy and i think a welcomed layer of extra hydration especially when it's super cold and even now in may i mean the weather has been crazy okay some days is may appropriate you know and some days is a little colder than usual no matter what though even in the summertime i would still insist on applying some snail mucin and the purpose this serves and snail essence or mucin rather is known for its reparative properties it's very healing and soothing in nature it's said to be great for lessening the look of a post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation oral evening of the skin tone contributing to brightness i love all those things okay I, I want all those things to happen to my complexion and with the snail mucin you can't go wrong and this product specifically from the cost rx and i think pretty much across the board, fragrance-free. There's no bergamot oil or linalool or those, you know, sneaky fragrant ingredients on the list. Doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't smell like a weird product or or nothingness. It's I think it's such a simple product that anyone can use actually anywhere from the sensitive part of the spectrum to the oily. And even if you are oily and you found that you you know tend to stay away from those products that are a little more moisturizing in nature, I think it's something good to have because as one that had oily skin as a, as a young person, I always used to use the astringent products that were way too drying and definitely caused unnecessary irritation. So anything that's healing and reparative and soothing in nature, I slap it on my face slap it on especially since i do use tretinoin so anything that i apply around that i make sure that it's just going to further amplify my moisture levels and just keep my skin happy next up the in street green tea fresh toner i usually use this in the morning this is high in antioxidants is there's a lot of green tea in here okay and i find it quite refreshing actually i had mentioned this in my first video that i wanted to maybe put some in a bottle so when it gets really hot you know when i'm out on the beach whenever that happens do a little spritz of the green tea all over the body you know this doesn't only have to be exclusively used on the face but what i appreciate about it is that it it doesn't have 
an artificial smell to it. It just smells like tea. It's very lightweight in nature and it's a toner, but I apply it as an essence. I pat it on my skin when it is still wet from my cleansing step. Then I'll go in with snail essence or I'll go in with another serum. But before I move on to that one, I really love the green tea toner for morning time. It's a little more astringent, not like clean and clear astringent, okay? If you sit on the more oily part of the spectrum and you found that other essences were maybe leaving your skin a little too dewy, then I think the green tea will be a nice pick because it's very refreshing in feel. There's no... Uh, menthol, eucalyptus, or peppermint in this, I think just the nature of the formula lends that refreshing, just cooling type of a experience. Because it is high antioxidants given the amount of green tea in here, very protective in nature against, you know, the free radicals and the baddies that are flying all over the place. Therefore, I do think this optimal to be applied under your vitamin C serum and therefore under your SPF so that you have the full gamut, okay, of environmental stressor protection, against the sun and the wind and the dust and the whatever, you're good to go, ironclad. The next serum I would like to present is the iUnique Tea Tree Relief Serum. This was included in the Sensitive Skin Bundle that was sent to me by YesStyle and definitely my favorite product out of the bunch because it is the only one that is truly fragrance-free. And I don't have the box with me, I did at the time. It says, but in the video I read the inky list and the first ingredients listed in addition to the, I think, water it might have been, or maybe the first ingredient is the tea tree leaf water and the centella asiatica leaf water. So the tea tree water is not at the bottom of the list. It's way at the top and I think an ideal product for anyone who has ultra sensitive skin that wants to use a serum but found that the ones they encountered were a little too irritating. Maybe they were too active in nature because you have a lot of serums that maybe have azelaic acid, mandelic acid, or you know all the whatever acids. This one is truly healing in nature does not cause irritation if you have eczema if you have rosacea if you have skin that easily becomes inflamed but you need to apply something that's going to help with your hydration levels and just boost the efficacy of your moisturizer without causing havoc without compromising your skin barrier then i think you should try out the eye unique very lightweight in nature it doesn't feel sticky it applies well and again a really nice step to take before for your moisture one. I found actually one day where my skin was feeling a little irritated. It could have been a day where I was doing like multi face cheek products on the video and I was taking off, putting on, taking off, putting on. I applied this and my skin immediately felt soothed. My skin automatically felt better. And I think it's due to the nature of the formula so if you're looking out for a product that had those properties check it out now the next one from the same i unique line that i presented in my most favorite april face video was the centella calming tree gel now the reason why i hold the tea tree leaf serum first is because this unfortunately has bergamot oil in here now although you don't smell it it's not aggressive if you have ultra sensitive skin and bergamot oil you know no matter where it rests on the ingredient list if it's included and you know you're really sensitive to it unfortunately you might not be able to use this but i found that this is an incredible texture it's not sticky it applies well and it also doesn't evaporate and just blend into nothingness like you feel that there is a difference in your hydration levels when you apply the calming gel and i think ideal to maybe if you're on the drier part of the spectrum apply under another moisturizer to kind of boost those hydration levels or if you are more on the oily part of the spectrum, ideal to apply under your SPF. I found that some people thought applying a separate moisturizer before the SPF could be a little much, especially because, you know, the whole SPF thing has been 
a little overwhelming. I've been following the news about it. I don't know where it sits right now. Like, are we buying Korean and Japanese sunscreen again? I know Australia has much stricter regulations when it comes to SPF. So I'll present what I bought from the haul video. I don't know where it sits. I, you know, I don't know if it's truly SPF 50, okay? Don't yell at me. In so much, if you have an SPF that works for you, but you found that applying a separate moisturizer just left your complexion feeling a little heavy, then the Centella Calming Gel, I think an ideal product to apply before your SPF step. Next up, the Cost RX Advanced Snail Peptide Eye Cream. I don't really know if this had, because, okay, April was a mm. when it came to my allergies. I try not to itch my eyes. I had the eye drops. I didn't take any medicine because I don't like taking medicine. Although I know before when my allergies were really bad and I if I had to get things done, I had to take the meds, but they weren't so severe that I couldn't deal with it. But that included also itchy eyes and I unfortunately succumb to itching the eyes in addition to not sleeping well on some nights I mean the bags were hollow okay they're a little gray they're a little discolored I do find though this product is very lightweight in nature but the perfect texture to apply on your under eyes it doesn't feel goopy it doesn't feel heavy it lays beautifully under my concealer and it gives me the right amount of moisturization that i think is optimal for you know your makeup or just to have on on its own i like to apply this actually not only on my under eyes but all over my orbital eye area so i'll take about this much and then I just right over. Now, I know I'm only supposed to use the, the ring finger because it is the weakest finger out of the five. And then I'll tap all around. And again, no fragrance, lightweight in nature. It has a, a cooling sensation, again, without the inclusion of any of the menthol, a peppermint, and the eucalyptus, whatever. I find it quite nice, you know. Is it truly so transformative that it completely erased my under eye circles in darkness? 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 Probably not, but I think it was due to the conditions that I was also uh, going through. My allergies were really bad. I wasn't sleeping well, but in terms of uh, combating under eye dryness, this really is a beautiful product and something I enjoy to use. Again, that fits well with all other products that I uh, include in my regimen, not only for skincare, but for makeup. So I will continue using this until it's done. If I would replace it with another eye product, I will let you know, but so far so good with the, uh, the snail peptide eye cream. And I wanted to quickly mentioned that the iUnique Foaming Centella Cleansing, the cleansing foam, I don't have with me because it's at Bay's house. So because I have quite a few cleansers, I keep some here and I keep some over at his house. But I will mention though, I quite enjoy that cleanser as a morning one. It's very lightweight in nature. Unfortunately, it does have fragrance. It's light. So if you can withstand it, if it's not going to trigger your allergies, or more importantly, it's not gonna trigger your eczema or psoriasis. It probably would if your uh, skin barrier is already compromised and even the lightest of fragrances will be triggering to that. I would stay away. But if you have normal skin, if you're okay with a little light fragrance, I quite enjoy the foam. It doesn't leave my skin stripped. It's quite nice actually to apply on my skin. And I spend maybe a minute or two just using gentle circular motions around my skin so the foam can grab excess dirt and oil, makeup that might have been left behind from my first cleansing balm step. And when I rinse it clean, my skin feels clean without feeling stripped and dry and really primed for the next step. So I'm happiest over there. Sometimes I miss it and, you know, I don't want to use it, but... I guess I should just bring it back here, but it's fine over there. It's perfect. And in regards to a second cleanse, I think ideal for that step and it just not being the only cleanser if you happen to be wearing sunscreen and makeup. If you're wearing both, I would highly recommend that you either 
uh, clean your skin twice with that same cleanser or rely on a balm or cleansing oil first and then go in with the centella cleansing foam now we're off to the masks i have to i have to be honest with you friends i'm a bad masker i forget that i have them and I get into my routine, you know, my habits. And right after cleansing, I go right into my essence. I'm like, oh my gosh, have I got the mask? Have I got the mask? I did, however, at least use them once. I used the mugwort mask and the honey mask. The hu honey, honey, the honey mask is quite nourishing, okay? And it straight up looks like honey. When I apply this, it was like, oh, this is nice. It's really creamy. It had a little bit of like, silkiness due to it and when i rinsed it my my skin felt nourished okay so i do feel uh the honey mask is ideal for drier skin types sure you could use it if you're oily but be prepared when you rinse it it's it's not going to be like a clay mask rinse where that's all about removing the impurities and the gunk. This is more about nourishing, healing, and allowing the skin to be a little happier so it's in a better state to repair itself. This has 38.7%. I think that means it has this much honey. I'm going to assume that. Uh, 10 minutes to maximum an hour. I think that day when I applied it, I had it on for a half an hour. And it's nice. It didn't smell overwhelmingly sweet. It was actually quite pleasant to keep on. And the texture was wonderful. I think uh, an ideal mask to wear on a self-care morning, afternoon, or night. Okay. And maybe something really nice to do before maybe a photo shoot. If you know you're going to wear super glam makeup, I think the skin is prepped well for beautiful foundation because the honey mask leaves the skin in such a beautiful, I want to say dewy state, but it's not sticky because I know dewy can, can be often associated with like greasy too much too much shine i think it really nice especially if you have dry combination skin maybe for instance if you did have combination skin you would only apply the honey mask to portions of your face that tend to be drier than let's say the center of it and when you apply your makeup thereafter post rinsing off the mask i think it will lay down a lot better now off to the mugwort mugwort was my favorite this was like you know, you you applying like the forest mud on your face. This is what it looks like. I don't know if you could see like the the herbs and it does smell herbaceous in nature. I think mugwort, the, the role for this mask is that it's soothing in nature, very healing. It allows the skin to just take a moment, okay? Set itself up, reset not feel overwhelmed. This one is recommended to be left on for five to 10 minutes. I do think the mugwort, when I applied it in comparison to the honey mask, not that they, I don't want to call it activity, but there was definitely some, there was some of that going on. It wasn't burning. There was no discomfort. But I think the mugwort, you know what, let me, I'm going to go to the product page quickly. Because I ain't trying to tell you something crazy, okay? Calms the skin down by gently reducing heat. So it's, I think it's more so like, that's what I was feeling. I, I definitely felt there was a change <laughs> in my, in my face's temperature. Because I think ideal probably like after, because, okay, we shouldn't be out trying to, you know blast sun rays on our face i do realize though it happens and i think this mask will be ideal for that situation when the skin is hot it's inflamed very cooling very calming in nature and i think that's the role the mugwort mask plays and i probably you know it's just a, it's a smallish jar but sometimes you know if you get that sunburn on your shoulders or in the back of your neck or maybe on the on the top of your forehead you can just slap this on those areas and just help it heal a little faster because, you know, we want that sun damage to be reversed or as much as we can, as much as we can salvage if that can even happen. 
So in that case, I definitely will use the mugwort maybe more in the summertime. I ain't gonna be out there like that though. I'm just letting you know. But moments, okay, where I think my skin is a little hot, took on a little too much. I'm gonna slap this on. And I'm happy I haven't been using it as much because again, when I received this, we, we were still in April, you know, I wasn't out in the sun like that. There were some beautiful days, but I didn't expose myself in a way that I know I will in the summertime. So I will definitely update you again, but when I had used it one night that my skin was feeling a little inflamed, it worked out perfectly. And following is the Mugwort Essence. I got the mini size, but you know, she's almost done. She's uh, more than halfway through and I, I wanted to, I didn't want to commit to the larger version because I still have the industry, I still have my Neogen rice ferment something something essence, which I love. So I didn't want to go crazy by purchasing another full size essence bottle, but I do quite enjoy this one as well. The same properties, the mugwort mask hold, healing, cooling in nature. This is a little more viscous. It's not as watery as, let's say, the Inch Tree one or even my Neogen. It does, it has a little bit of an herbaceous smell to it, not overwhelming at all. I do really like it. Will I repurchase this? Maybe. I think after I finish either my Inch Tree or my Neogen, I would commit to the mugwort. I think maybe after I, I am done with the Neogen, it's time for me to move on. I love that product so much. It's so difficult for me to buy anything else because it's one of those things you've used it for so long. It plays well with others. It just fits so seamlessly into my skincare routine, whether night or day. I just, it's hard for me to, to, to try anything else or replace it. But I think the mugwort might be one I could use maybe more ideal for fall winter so i'm going to be super diligent about finishing uh the inch tree and a neogen for spring summer we'll see where we are for fall winter and i'll decide then if i repurchase the mugwort essence in the full size all right we're coming down to the last few <sighs> the high mesh all clean bomb i actually really really like this i have been using it because unfortunately the citrus scent did trigger my allergies. And because they were a little aggressive in April, I had to take a break from this. I had to a step away, okay? I think after the season has passed, I will be able to use this again. Now, separate from the fragrance, I do find this an incredibly silky texture and just beautiful for makeup removal. It's nice where the product emulsifies smoothly and it just makes it beyond easy to I mean I'm here for like a full-on minute okay because you have such nice slip to go over your whole face I think it grabs the makeup and sunscreen successfully in a way that when you rinse this clean which you know I still go in with my second cleansing step but I feel pretty good just using this. I think this is very thorough in the cleansing. It picks up not only the makeup, the sunscreen, but the excess dirt, the pollutants, the, the, the grubbiness, okay, that gets stuck in the pores. It's an excellent product. I just wish it was fragrance-free. If Hymish could make a fragrance-free, all-clean balm, I'll be all up in there, okay? I'll buy tubs of this stuff because I do think they nailed the texture. Because as much as I like the Inky List Old Cleansing Balm, because I repurchased that. I do understand it's, it's so creamy that you, you kind of have to put in a little bit of push when applying it all over your skin. This has such nice slide, you do not have to apply pressure, which is important because you don't want to press or, you know, over manipulate your skin during the cleansing step. And the high mesh is such an ideal texture that you could just... I mean, your fingers barely graze over the skin and you still can get around and in as much as you need without disturbing your skin, without being aggressive with it. So, you know, I understand though, for those who don't have a problem with fragrance, that 
having a product that smells good during your cleansing step is really is ritualistic in nature right depending on the scent will determine the response right lavender is really relaxing citrus a little more revitalizing and i get it like at the end of the day you like to rub something on your face it smells good i get it i will love that okay i would love to wear perfumes and colognes and spritz spritz i smell so good it really could do me in okay and i just cannot i cannot live that fragrance life so as much as i love this and and maybe they do have a fragrance free version that i don't know about you can let me know down below fam uh and i actually have other products that are fragrance free in nature for the cleansing step the cleansing bomb step i just love how this feels and again i'll hop back into it after this allergy season has made its way out and i and i would love to finish it so stay tuned for that the pion kang yul acne super thin spot stickers <laughs> i call them spot stickers but they're they're acne uh spot patches what these do is they're like an ultra small thin band-aid where if you're like me and sometimes you, you get your grubby little fingers on your face you're not supposed to this helps the wound heal uh stay moisturized and not dry out there's less of a risk for it to leave a dark mark uh that if especially if it's around here that if you wear your mask and you feel that's going to exacerbate it that you could apply this on any spots that you might have gone in on you know like sometimes i do that it starts to inflame and this kind of pulls out the excrement from the pore so you don't have to and i think it just accelerates the healing process as well and it's a psychological thing like once the sticker's on there you can't touch it you're done stop it go home and i think that's the role this plays for me especially like later on i'm going to apply a patch here maybe one here and on those pimples that are developing but you want it to come to the surface like now and it's taking forever this will definitely speed up the process and i think it helpful especially if you know you know it's there and you have this like devilish desire to go in on it and squeeze it but if you put the patch on there it just kind of helps you to walk away walk away let it do its thing and don't cause trouble okay and lastly lastly the skin aqua uv super moisture gold or essence gold spf again i don't know if this is really giving me spf 50 i don't even know if it's giving me pa plus 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 all I could tell you is that uh, I wear my sun hat. I, I still try to stay away from the sun, meaning I would cross the street, walk on the other side, you know, not on the sunny side, but on the shady side. I did want to apply this, though, on camera. <gasps> That's enough. Because I think it's so funny since when I first apply it, it looks a little scary. It looks like... Is that going to, um, is it going to leave that nice, beautiful cast of sunscreen? It looks like it's going to, but I find when you apply it and you really take your time in blending it in, it kind of like disappears. I don't, I don't know how. I have no just, I, I, I have no clue. It's, it's like wizardry the witchcraft of it all i apply like two finger lengths just on my face and then i apply another finger length on my neck it's hilarious when i've seen some people apply a pea-sized amount of spf i'm like um do you know what spf is supposed to do it's roll ma'am so that's how much i apply but you s did it like I'm telling you, it just kind of disappears, but I still feel it on my face. So I've been quite enjoying this in that I really love the texture, at least behind. There's a little bit of plushness. I think my complexion looks nourished. It looks moisturized. Again, as I said before, if you find that applying this over a separate moisturizer is too much, then applying the Super Aqua 
with the Centella Calming Gel Cream, I think an ideal duo, right? I still apply this over my uh, Good Molecules Silicone Free Mor Priming Moisturizer because, you know, I like a little bit of that extra-ness, you know what I'm saying? But look at that. It has a little bit of like a glow to it because based on the product description and just it, I felt like this was going to be a good one for me. You know what I'm saying? It lays beautifully under makeup. Now, this does have alcohol. And usually what I've learned with SPF, that alcohol is present so that it can better stabilize the filters found in the formula so they don't break down, that it helps to kind of spread so you have that even layer, that even shield of sunscreen over your face. But given all the, the details we've been presented with, you know, the efficacy of SPF, if the filters are really doing what they're supposed to be doing, I'm going in with pure faith. So let me know what your favorite SPFs have been. I call it Super Aqua, Skin Aqua, excuse me. If you have the Skin Aqua, if you have different versions of this, because I believe, because I used one that was Skin Aqua, but it was like in a white bottle with the gold pump. I gave that to Bay. And I like that one too, actually. That was a really good one as well. So this line of SPF, I'm a fan of. I'm also open to use different versions of it. But so far, I really like this. And I will continue using this, uh, especially throughout the summertime. If it's going to do what it's supposed to do, you know, I'm, I'm going to have the witch hat on anyway. So just for for reinforcements okay all right that is the follow-up video thank you yes style again for sponsoring it let me know what your favorites have been fam i know you had mentioned several of them in my last video and i'm so sorry about the delay for the giveaway i emailed those winner names and i will put them down below so you could check out who they are say congratulations I'm going to chill on the skincare for a bit because as you see, I have quite a bit to go through. But again, let me know what you have been using, what you've been loving. I'll see you down in the comments. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you in here again with another review tutorial. Yes, style skincare extravaganza, monthly favorites, or Saturday brunch time chit chat. Take care, and I will see you again soon.